In this episode of Travelog, we're heading to Qingdao, the host of this year's SEO Summit. With its international appeal and historic European villas, we'll explore how this port city that's synonymous with beer continues to reinvent itself. Ah, oh, gotta love the smell of the sea, hey? So uh, this time around we've come to the beautiful seaside city of Qingdao and of its many iconic landmarks, that one is the Olympic Sailing Centre, also the site of the Shanghai Corporation Organisation Summit. But also this city for the longest time has been a major hub for transportation, for commerce and of industry, but it's also one of China's most livable cities. And this time around I want to show you the many faces of this beautiful city. The Shanghai Corporation Organization, or SCO, is comprised of China, Russia, India and several Central Asian countries. It serves as a platform for dialogue on economic development, politics and regional security. Situated in Shandong province on China's east coast, Qingdao has always had an international appeal. From its ports, ships have direct access to the Pacific Ocean, and from there, every corner of the world. But the city's not just a hit with logistics companies and summits. As one of China's most popular seaside resorts, Qingdao gets more than its fair share of visitors. Its name literally means Green Island. And while it's more of a peninsula than an island, it's easy to see what inspired the reference to green. The city is divided into three main districts, although most of its attractions are concentrated in Shunan in the south. The other two districts are home to many of the local Qingdao enterprises that have made it big internationally. Brands like Hisense, Qingdao Beer and Hire. Another of Qingdao's claims to fame is the Jiaozhou Bay Bridge, connecting the outlying island of Huangdao to the rest of the city. It's the world's second longest bridge over water. Oh, so the best way to see Qingdao is definitely from above. But if you neither have wings nor do you have a drone, then the next best thing is to come to the Qingdao TV Tower, which is the tallest structure here in the city. It was also the first steel structure in Qingdao, and I guess this is why they call this the window of Qingdao. From up here, you can spy some of the city's most famous landmarks and my starting point in Qingdao. Ah, now this is the line. If you've ever had uh, one of these beers, you'll probably recognize the symbol from looking at that building over there. That's the Zhanqiao Pier, which is the unofficial mascot of the city and also the first place that most visitors will visit when they come to Qingdao and from here you can get one of the best impressions of this city. Built in 1891, Zhanqiao Pier was Qingdao's first wharf. It's conveniently located nearby many of the city's sites, such as its naval museum. I highly recommend braving the crowds and walking all the way to the pavilion at the end of the pier. Your reward is this gorgeous view of Qingdao Bay. Alrighty, I hope you guys don't get seasick because you know what I'm about to do. 
Uh, Qingdao is the sailing capital of China, and as you could probably tell from the rings, it also hosted the Olympic and Paralympic sailing events back in 2008. And uh, while most of the boats here in this marina are privately owned, there actually are a couple that are available for normal tourists like myself to go out and experience the joy of the open seas. Okay. All right. All right. Watch your step. Oh, oh, they, oh. Qingdao produces some of China's best competitive sailors. Believe it or not, the sport is so ingrained in local culture that it's even taught at primary school. I might have missed the boat on that one, but my captain is more than happy to show me the ropes. Oh, this is kind of fun. He tells me that sailing is a physically and mentally challenging sport, where everyone must pull their weight. Nana 每个男人都有个航海梦吧。Coming <laughs> up next, we head to Qingdao's historic quarter and discover a world of extravagant colonial era architecture before getting a crash course in the best cuisine in China. Now this is as Qingdao as it gets. It actually looks a bit European, doesn't it? But uh, if you show anyone a photo of this place with its red roofs and uh, green trees and yellow walls and the sea in the background, they'll be able to say straight away that this is Qingdao. Though they're not as tall as the TV tower, Xiaoyu Hill and the nearby Signal Hill are excellent vantage points from which to admire Qingdao's old quarter. The city looks remarkably European, and that's because from 1898 until 1914, Qingdao was a German concession. Though they were only here for 16 years, the Germans left an indelible mark, building grand red-roofed villas the most extravagant of which was this palatial mansion. Wow! Not bad, not bad. Feels uh, more like the former home of a prince than the former residence of the German governor. I mean, as you can see, no expense was spared to build the place. All of these furnishings, decorations, building materials were shipped in from Germany. And back then, it cost a million gold Deutschmarks to build this place. Now, one gold Deutschmark was worth 20 normal ones. And to put that into perspective, the average German laborer made something like 850 Deutschmarks. So it would have taken someone like me over 20,000 years to save up enough money to build a place like this. It's been said that this mansion is one of the best examples of colonial German architecture in the world. And each of its five floors was designed with a specific use in mind. So, what does such an astronomical sum of money get you? Well, this mansion has 66 rooms and no two rooms are the same. And in fact, if you look closely, 
Every single room has three very different features. The lights, the chandeliers are all different. All of the ceiling decorations are different. And uh, while not every single room has a furnace, no two furnaces are the same. The thing is, the governor built this entire mansion for him and his family of four. And, you know, obviously they had maids, but this whole floor was used solely for his family. And once you come in here and you see the plush carpet and drapes and bed, you probably have an idea of who used to stay here. This was the governor's bedroom. And uh, rumor has it that when the bill for this house landed on the desk of the Kaiser, he wasn't very happy and he summoned the governor back to Germany to explain himself. He was able to get away with it, but he only stayed here in China for six years. Uh, later on, this mansion was used to host visiting dignitaries, visiting presidents, and now it's just a beautiful museum of colonial arts and architecture. The mansion later became the Qingdao Guest House, and this very room was once used by Chairman Mao. As one of the first structures put up by the Germans, this mansion set the tone for the buildings to come. It was the gold standard. In fact, the area around the governor's mansion is chock full of luxury villas. And showing me around today is local guide, Mr. Sun. Wow. So uh, this was essentially the Beverly Hills of ancient China where the rich and famous lived. You had the top scholars, the top literati, uh, even aristocrats from the former Qing dynasty were all congregated here as well. It was really the who's who of China. As a German concession, Qingdao was outside the Chinese emperor's control making it a safe haven for out-of-favor court officials. The presence of nearby Shandong University also helped attract notable scholars and intellectuals. One of the most prominent thinkers to make his home here was Kang Youwei, an influential reformer who also coined this city's motto. Oh, not bad. Pretty good view. Would have been uh, better back in the days because none of those houses would have been here and you could see straight out to sea, but could totally see how this could be the inspiration of the phrase green trees, red roofs, azure ocean and blue sky, which even now, 100 years later, is still the motto of Qingdao. Mr. Sun tells me that the German settlers thought this was the most livable part of town, as it remains relatively cool in summer. It's also close to the heart of the city. This if you're wondering why the church's Art Nouveau exterior looks familiar, it's because it was designed by the same architect who did the governor's mansion. These days, the church still holds services on Sundays, and it continues to be Qingdao's timekeeper.
。啊，这还是相当有年头了，看一九零九下面写的。从一九零九到现在一百多年，一直在运转。哇，这个现在还准吗？呃，非常准。我本身以为是应该是人工会敲这个钟，全是机械在做。Wow, must have been pretty, pretty strange for the villagers back then over a century ago to see something like this. I mean, even now I'm looking at it and I don't quite know what it is and I don't quite know how it works, but it's a feat of engineering. To this day, the mechanism has only been repaired once. <laughs> oh man, it feels like everyone's getting married in here, but you know, it kind of makes sense. It feels like we're in a European plaza, and St. Michael's Cathedral is one of Qingdao's most iconic landmarks. It's also, I think, one of China's biggest Gothic cathedrals, and if you look at the roof, it's actually in the shape of a cross. There's no way to miss the place. There are over a dozen churches in Qingdao, but St. Michael's is definitely the most popular. The Catholics built it in the Neo-Romanesque and Gothic styles, and in the past, its towers would have dominated Qingdao's skyline. In addition to being great for wedding photography, I'm told Qingdao is the most filmed city in China, with over 2,000 movies shot here to date. It's easy to see why, especially in the exclusive neighborhood of Badaguan. The name literally means eight great passes, a reference to the Great Wall. These days, it's home to VVIPs and will sometimes be closed off to host visiting world leaders. With some 20 different styles of architecture here, there's bound to be at least one mansion you wouldn't mind owning. And while many properties aren't open to the public, this one is. Called Hua Shi Lou, or Flower Stone Villa because of its elegant soapstone walls, this miniature castle is as eclectic as it gets. Originally built for a Russian aristocrat, the mansion combines Roman, Greek and Gothic influences with Chinese furnishings. And to top it all off, it even has a turret for a roof. Man, this is uh, not bad at all. Back when this place was built, it would have been the highest point here, so it would have been the most exclusive penthouse in the most exclusive neighborhood. So this is really prime real estate. I feel like a millionaire. After all that wandering around, I'm ready for dinner. This is Chunghe Lou, Qingdao's most time-honored restaurant. It specializes in Lu cuisine, dishes from Shandong province. Okay, pretty excited. So we're going to learn the secrets of Lu cuisine, which Mr. Sun tells me is the top school of cuisine in China. A pretty grand claim. But apparently it was from Lu cuisine that China's other culinary styles developed. The secret is control. Chinese chefs use cleavers for everything, and a Lu cuisine master must be able to perform complex cuts effortlessly. They must also have complete control of the heat. So with the 
，那这个对时间的控制也是要求很大，对吧？中国的厨师全部都是靠自己的经验，呃，早一秒、晚一秒都会出一个大的偏差。There's a strong emphasis on seafood. This is Qingdao by the sea, after all. 挺期待的，终于看到这个菜都做好了哈，那就开始。好，非常好，对。哦，这切的刀工还是非常精致的，都切成花了都。呃，它是片的很薄，然后一加热以后就收缩卷曲了，像花一样。嗯，先尝一尝口感。嗯，哦，哦 ，it's。Really, really tender, very fresh. It has the highest length, so it cuts the time of cooking. So it's original and original. Then the most famous dish is our lamb. Yes, yes, yes. Then just add a little butter. Yes, add a little butter. Hmm. 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 Hmm
Oh, this is my favorite part of the city. So, even if you don't know where Qingdao is or you've never heard of it, if you so much as like to drink even a little bit, you would definitely heard of its beer. What's more, the Qingdao Beer Museum is an actual working brewery. How's that for industrial tourism? This way. So these were the old machines they used to live here? Yeah, made by German in 1903. Oh, wow. We stopped using until 1995. Ah, so these would have been vats for making beer? Yeah, this is the original cooking room. Oh, okay. You can look inside. Oh. Yeah, this uh, big port made by German yeah. Yeah, in 1903, made of copper. How much beer does it uh, About 9,000 liters. Maybe about a year's worth of beer. <laughs> Be careful. The Germans founded this brewery around the same time as their churches, which shows you where their priorities lay. The locals developed a taste for the beer too, and Qingdao is now the second largest brewery in China. This is our modern factory, modern bottling. Actually, 10 bottles per second. Wow, that's a lot of beer. It's very fast. There's still people down there working. Yeah, yeah. It's a three-time shift. Quality control, 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. I see why it's uh, I see why it's called the drunken house now. <laughs> Except you actually get to feel drunk whilst whilst over. But it's it's really disorientating. Gotta 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 get out of here. Whew. Well that was a bit weird. I've uh, I've been drunk many times in my life, but I guess there's a first time for everything. Still a little bit dizzy, gotta might not be able to walk straight. It's all well and good learning about how to make beer, but this, in my opinion, is the best part of the museum. The bar. Ah, if you've come all the way to the Tingna Brewery, there is only one kind of beer you must drink. It's this one. Unpasteurized Qingdao draft, only fresh for 24 hours, so it literally is the only place on earth that you can get this beer. Bottoms up. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I can't take this home, which is why I've got this little beautiful mug. Gonna have to take this one back. Like the European villas, beer is now an inseparable part of Qingdao life. It's part of Qingdao's identity. Check it out, I've got my beer to go. But man, it's like a mini Las Vegas over here, except uh, instead of casinos, they've got beer and seafood. But, you know, I've been trying to figure out what word best represents Qingdao, and I think it's international, because whether it's German houses or German beers, they've gone and taken international influences and made it their own. They've gone from made in Germany to made in Qingdao. Anyway, I'm Teren, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode of Pavlov. Cheers.